So of course, I can't start the video off before I get my first two shoutouts. Two shoutouts. They're gonna be right here. So give me the favor, go to the channel, show them the love, and of course, just be an awesome community. Now, if you want to shout, all you can do is like this video, be subscribed, and down below in the comments, leave hashtag saggy time first. Two people, leave that comment down below. We'll get a shout out for the following video. Gotta catch my breath real quick. <sighs> also, don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way, you're aware of future videos that get posted, and you never miss out on any shout outs. Com slash that guy saggy. I also do have a Patreon if you guys want to go support me as a content creator and support this channel. You can do that at patreon.com slash thatguyjuliand. Anything of course helps support me as a content creator and support this channel. Now, now it is, it is Sunday. And it's finally not sneaking hot here in El Paso. It's actually like 83 degrees right now. Yesterday it was 98 degrees. I tried recording, but it was just stupid hot. Like really, really hot where it got to the point where I was just melting, I was melting. Yeah, it's really, really hot here in El Paso. But it's 83 degrees right now, so I'm gonna take the advantage and I'm gonna go ride, shred, lose some weight. I don't really know what tricks I'm gonna do today, but there is one thing that I do have to do. I gotta patch my two first. So I'm actually gonna give you all some dad how to's on how to patch a tube real quick. Well, not real quick, but how to patch a BMX tube. We'll put it, BMX dads, how to patch a BMX tube. Gotta take my wheel off too. Of course, after you get your wheel off, one thing you want to do first is take off all of the air, all of the air from your tube. That way, just makes it easier to take the tire off the rim itself. Make sure you get all, all of that air out, all of the air out. Now you can use tire levers to remove the tire, but like this is a tire lever fact. But I suggest that you don't. When using tire levers. It actually destroys the bead. So you can see the bead right here. That's the bead of your tire. So when you do that, it rips the bead over time and eventually it causes your tire to weaken and actually causes blowouts. The best thing to do is, again, release all the air. Make sure there's no air in that tube at all. And what you can do is you're actually gonna pinch back and then you're gonna pinch forward. So you're lifting the bead up. And it literally just comes right off. And you just slide your hand all the way down the bead. Boom, look, it's done. Now, here's something that a lot of bike shops do, but they actually don't know why they do it. A lot of people say, well, if you're not you're not a professional if you don't put the valve cap near the logo. But there's actually a reason why you do that. Bike shops, a lot of bike shops don't know why, but they do it though. The reason why you put the valve next to the logo of your tire is for reasons that you get a flat. So you get a flat, right? And then you have to go, and once you patch your tube, you're like, man, I gotta look through the inside of my rim and my tire to find the hole, find what punctured it. Well, if you line up your patch tube with the tire right here, right? So you line it up, and where would say the hole was right here? That's where I patched the hole. Well, I can literally just go to the logo and find the patch and I can notice, oh, well, you know, the hole was right here from the logo. So the thorn is in this area and it makes it way easier to find thorns, needles, whatever punctured your tire. That way you can just remove it. Instead of having to go and run your hand all the way through it and risking cutting yourself. That's, that's a tip to be mixed at. Just so y'all know why you put the logo and the valve together. Also, another thing to do, take off the whole tire. Makes it way easier. Way easier. I'm gonna go put some air in this real quick. One of the main reasons why a lot of people actually don't patch tubes anymore is just because a box of patches is around two dollars and maybe some change depending where you're at and some stores you can depending where you're at you can actually put another two dollars in like four bucks and actually go out and buy a new tube but then there's places like in like El Paso that are just constantly your tires are gonna constantly get thorns so it's actually more reliable just to carry patches than to buy tubes constantly just just so y'all know now after you have your tube fully inflated 
You can either dunk the tube in water and look for air bubbles that are protruding out to find the hole, or of course you can like sort of hear it, feel it. I actually got two. Now the things you're gonna need is of course your patch, a black marker, and some glue. I'm gonna need two patches though. Now after you find the hole, I found the hole, it's, I don't know if you can see it, it's right there, it's right there. After you find the hole, go ahead and put an X on it, and then put a big circle over it. Because pretty much the circle is your glue surface that you're going to put, so like a guide. Now, I heard another one. Ooh, it's right on the patch. Put an X, and a big circle. Big X in a big circle. Let me just make sure. Make sure there's no more. Yeah, there's only two. Hell yeah, only two. I'm gonna bring you guys closer in. Closer in. After you already found and marked the hole, get your sandpaper out. And you want to sand it down. That way the glue has a surface to stick to. Make sure it's rough. Like a rough surface. And make sure you get a good covering area. Like even though the hole is right here, I'm actually sanding a big surface area. Now I have one on the patch. Believe it or not, on the patch. After you have your areas that you're gonna glue sanded down, get your glue. Now when it comes to the glue for the patches, doesn't matter really how much you put. Again, it doesn't matter at all how much you put. So if you feel like you want to go ham, go ham. But make sure that you give it a good, good surface area. Good surface area. A good big coating. But think of the patch glue as like a glue stick. Like don't pour from here, just rub it on like you would a glue stick. Now that my area is glued, here's the one thing that people do not do when they do patch tubes. Usually people think that after you put glue, you put the patch right away. No, you need to let the glue actually cure until it's tacky. That way it has an actual good surface to stick to or not the patches will be sliding everywhere or just actually just won't work correctly. So I'm gonna come back in maybe like five minutes. So it's been about five minutes, but I actually took out all or the majority of the air that I could at the moment, just because it's easier to flatten out the surface. Instead of having a big tube where you have to hold it, it's easier just to have a flat surface to put a patch on. Now get your patch. Take off the backing. Most patches have like an aluminum backing. Just bend the aluminum backing forward and then back. That you can remove the backing a lot easier. A lot easier. Find where you patched at. Remember, the reason why I said put a good amount of glue is that way you get a good surface area around it. That so you don't miss any part of the patch. Find out where the hole is and just place it on. Now, get your, your marker that you used and just roll it on the patch. You're doing that to release any air bubbles on the patch. When you put the tube in the tire and you fully inflate it, it actually takes out all the air bubbles that are inside the patch. But I'm doing this so I can remove the plastic cover that's on it. It makes it a lot easier that I'm not fumbling. Is that a perfect patch or what? Damn, double patches, double patches. Pretty patches. Now all I gotta do is put the tube back in the tire. Put a little air in your tube, right? I remember in the beginning I was saying how you want to line the valve with the logo. Again, you want to do that so you can actually find out where 
the thorns are in your tubes and your tires makes it way easier. Right. But also, also make sure before you even put the tube on, even though I know what punctured my tube already, I'm still gonna go and pick out any thorns just in case one of them wanna go and protrude inside the tire. You don't wanna go and throw the tube on, inflate your tube, you know, pump it up, put it on your bike, and then all of a sudden get another flat because you didn't go and check to make sure there wasn't anything else in your tire. That sucks. I'm actually gonna roll of sandpaper and I'm gonna run it through the inside of the tire just, just for my own safety. I know there's probably nothing in there because I literally just took out all the thorns, but this is just so I can feel good. Oh yeah, it feels so good. Now time to put it back on. Again, logo, valve stem, line them up. Also make sure you put your tire on the right way, whatever rotation it's supposed to go. Make sure you put it on right. That way you'll have to take it off later. Start on one side. But to help you finish putting on the tire, you wanna make sure that you put the tire where the valve is first. That way it helps, helps you out. Makes it a lot easier way easier and actually you're not just struggling trying to put the bead on where the valve is because that makes it way way harder to pinch in and you should be able to do this just by using a little muscle strength on your hands look it's all in it's all in Woo! you gotta line that valve up also make sure you have your valve stem straight if you have it where it's going in like that way crooked it's gonna cause the valve to stress and tear so make sure you put that in straight too. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Time to give this 50 PSI. If you do like these dad BMX how-tos, go ahead and leave me a big like in this video. That way I know that you guys do enjoy these and I'll make more. I'll implement them more into the vlog for you guys. But it is time to BMX. I noticed that most of my progression actually comes from me riding alone, solo riding. I think that's, well, it's mainly because I'm not trying to either impress anybody or just try, I guess, I don't know what you want to say, showboating. I'm not really a person to showboat. I just actually despise people who do that. But when I ride alone, I tend to focus more on what I want to do and not on what other people are doing. So I'm probably gonna start riding alone for the time being. If people show up, they show up. But I'm gonna try to as many soul missions as I can, that way I can just focus on my goals. I also need to get more mattresses. The dudes from Wattis came over because we left them the other night and they took all the mattresses. So we have no, no ghetto razor right now, but I'll get, I'll get more. I'll get more tomorrow or the next day. But of course, help me with my goal of 2018 of 10,000 subscribers. So like this video, subscribe. And of course, I'll see you guys next time. I also want to mention how much I love you dudes. Truly do, truly do love each and every one of you guys. You guys are just truly amazing. But yes, I'll see you guys next time.